Yo, yo, yo. It's your boy, Marcel Guapo, man. Street Certified News. And we back with another one. Uh, today's story is actually a, a story that happened last week. Um, but I wanted to take a little bit of time and kind of put together uh, the right information and enough information to, you know, really give y'all an in-depth story. Um, but we're going to talk about the guilty plea of Brooklyn rapper Casanova two times. And um, and we're going to really just lay out, you know, what happened, how it happened, and, you know, what some of the rumors are, you know, starting to come out about how he got caught up and all of that stuff, man. You know what I'm saying? First and foremost, we always got to say, man, hey, free the real, man. Free the boy Casanova, man. But uh, we're going to lay out exactly what happened and why some say people, you know, some people say he was forced to plead guilty. So on Wednesday, Rock Nation rapper Casanova pleaded guilty to joining in gang mayhem uh, as a leader of the untouchable Gorilla Stone Nation. Uh, the charges he pled guilty to included racketeering as well as some drug charges. 35-year-old rapper whose name is Caswell Sr. admitted to shooting someone at a party uh, in Florida in 2020 uh, over a gambling dispute. He also admitted to a 2018 robbery in Manhattan uh, in which a member of his entourage uh, choked the woman unconscious. He eventually pled guilty, like I said, Wednesday to those charges in U.S. District Court in White Plains, New York. On December 1st, 2020, federal prosecutors revealed that Casanova was one of the 18 alleged untouchable Gorilla Stone Nation members that were indicted uh, in a sprawling uh, drug conspiracy case. The feds claimed in the conspiracy ran from 2004 to 2020 and it spanned from New York uh, upstate down to Miami. Prosecutors also alleged in court documents that Caswell Sr. closely coordinated his artistic endeavors. Basically, he coordinated his rap career, you know, to not only benefit him, but to benefit uh, those in the game. Like we always we already been talking about this with the state of Georgia, you know what I'm saying? But this is actually a real Fed case and they're basically saying the same thing. Um, I'm going to show y'all, you know, we're going to lay it out later, but they have a little bit more evidence and the artists, you know, in this situation probably was a little bit more implicit in what was going on with these gang endeavors. But they really are cracking down on like gang affiliated rappers. If you are gang affiliated and you a rapper and you making a lot of money and that benefits the gang, that instantly could turn into a RICO case. So during the guilty plea proceedings, Caswell, uh, he gave his account of that gambling related shooting that we talked about back in July of 2020. Uh, he was quoted as saying that he was invited to a mansion party with his wife and a couple other friends. Um, he he specified it was not business. You know, it wasn't like rap business. It wasn't gang business. It was just him and his friends got invited to a mansion party. And in the mansion party, they was gambling. He later explains that he lost around $2,000 to an individual shooting dice. And I guess, you know, coming from the streets, he naturally paid the person who he owed the money to. Uh, he later found out that he was supposed to pay the house and that the house would reimburse the person, but the person had already took his money and left. So I guess a, a, a tussle ensued and uh, he's also quoted as saying that a gun was passed to him and when the judge asked whether he fired that gun, which people, like I said, he pled guilty to firing that gun. But when the judge asked if he fired the gun, he responded that it was a tussle. You know, basically alluded to the gun going off accidentally while people were kind of fighting over the fact that somebody robbed him and he paid dude the money and all type of crazy shit went happened. But I mean, I can understand that situation for Casanova. Like, hold on, motherfucker just robbed me for two bands and y'all on me about it? Like, hold on, like... You see what I'm saying? Like, that shit could get a little, little touchy. So, Senior also elaborated on the Manhattan Diner incident in which he also pled guilty to, which was a robbery and an assault, I believe. But uh, he he's quoted as saying that he was sitting at the diner with a bunch of girls um, and another woman came up to him recording and she was asking him, like, hey, don't you got a wife at home? And she was recording him and she told him that she was going to post it online. Uh, when she said that, 
he reached for her phone and took her phone from her. So basically the robbery is he took the person's phone and didn't give it back. But then they're also saying that another Gorilla Stone member who was with him at the time then choked out the woman until she was unconscious. Now that part is kind of crazy. Like I could see taking the lady phone like, all right, man, give me your phone. I'll get back to you later or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, you want to call that a robbery? I guess. But then one of my homies choke her out so she unconscious. I hope that didn't happen, Cass. But you know, hey, man, you know what I'm saying? Still free the boy, man. After that guilty plea, the big news really that I believe was that in the paperwork, it's being reported that someone in Casanova gang cooperated with the feds and helped them get Casanova on this RICO case. Uh, the U.S. attorney, David Felton, pointed to a social media post of Casanova standing next to a large quantity of marijuana. Um, this informant claimed that he saw Casanova personally re receive large shipments of this marijuana. So there was somebody in Casanova gang that was with him when shit was coming in. Bro ended up telling, hey, man, I seen Casanova personally receive large shipments of marijuana. The U.S. attorney also alleged that direct messages, I'm assuming to this informant, showed that Casanova was a member of the Gorilla Stone Nation. And one member even stated over the phone, um, so there's recorded jail messages between, you know, Gorilla Stone members and themselves. And they're talking about Casanova. And one of the members stated that, you know, the rapper always had a gun on him. And that some of the members of the gang felt that him being so heavily involved in the gang could uh, be a detriment to his rap career. You know, they wanted him to kind of step down and be a rapper, but he ass was with the shits 100%. So the gang's founder, Dwight Dick Wolf Reed, reportedly ran the Gorilla Stone Nation from behind bars while serving a 50 year sentence. But he's serving a 50 year sentence for a 2014 point blank shooting execution of a 33 year old man in a Harlem bar. Um, the feds are claiming that through his connection with Caswell Sr. Casanova, um, he received proceeds from the rapper's career. Caswell's best known for his 2016 hit record, Don't Run, and is due to be sentenced in December, which is kind of a long time to wait. Like, you, he plead guilty in May, he don't get sentenced to December. That's a lot of months in between sentencing. I noticed that they, they put that amount of time there as a bait. You know what I'm saying? That's what they do when they, you know, they want you to, they give you some time to think, you know what I'm saying, before we give you these years. Um, I want y'all to stay tuned, man, for more news. Uh, we gonna have more stuff coming up from the, uh, you know, from the story and from what's going on with the boy Cass. Um, it's your boy Amrex Show Guapo, man. We don't want to make this video too long. Uh, like, subscribe, drop a comment, man. We appreciate y'all for rocking with us. Uh, the most reputable source of urban news, man. Street certified news, man. Hey, man. Street certified report card, man. Copy service on you. Fuck with your boy, man. We out.